Off Street, 6158. Mm -hmm. What was it last year? About a half a million less than that. So 5.6. 5 5.6. 5 and flat. then the same with On Street total? It was 180,000 less. So 1.854. Yeah. You could, we could pull up the March report. Excellent by work by the team. Um, is there any questions there? I don't want to just spew the numbers. So if we went see. back four years pre-pandemic, mm -hmm. what were these numbers at that point? So we were about 19 million. So I suspected our mid-year was 8.5 year off street. That, 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 yeah, that, that's fair. That, that's the type of thing I'm looking for. And then we were okay. probably so, 2 so million we, in on street. It's only down 10%. If you're at 8.5 uh, to the year point. No, no, no. Oh, sorry. You overall, I was saying 8.5 in off street. Got it. And then probably 2 million in on street. Okay. So, so that number 25%. Yeah. 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 We're probably 25 to 30 overall. It's kind of where I'm in my head. Like two on eight, something like that. Yeah. One. I'm surprised it's that close. Really? I am, uh, you know, my, my opinion is downtown is it's a ghost town. You know, it's, it's, you know, the university is, is coming, but we're in our own little space. Um, many, many businesses are involved all in this thing. You know, and it's, yeah, I think the, 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 the conventions yeah. aren't there, but, you know, so those things aren't happening. So, and, and you know, David and, and, and others that have, you know, toughed this thing out, God bless them, but, um, you know, it's, it's are hard. You, are you able to pull up? I think the, the March. The only thing I would say, Charlie, is different is that uh, the evenings are hopping now. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's alive at night. So now, off day. streets free after six. So you're not getting any off street, no, but you're street. still parking meters. meters, free, meters. Yeah. I mean, I meant meters. Yeah. And, but, but, uh, but there's a lot going on at night now. There's a lot of people out right. walking by our cameras in front of our building. So we can see that. So I think from a meter perspective, I can tell you there are only some pockets that are back to normal, like the court area, San Pedro, around largely in San Pedro. Was, Those are performing. The mark the meters. meters. Yeah, the meters yeah. doing yeah. the day. Yeah. But everything else. It was February. It's down like right. more stroke, yeah, which then is at the only time like they are over cost right? So they're still under the court area, St. James, or people St. James, mm -hmm. St. Pedro, around the market. So we did better once I have to get close to the performance. Yes, that's right. To his point, there, that area yeah. is generally yeah. involved in traffic, traffic. restaurants. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on downtown now, and the word's not out. But at night, night. but during the day, forget about it. I mean, I'm hoping Zoom is back to three days a week. Adobe is a high wall with a moat around it, and they never come out. But you know, the other businesses, the law firms, and the like, are still two or three days a week. So it's a challenge. The people we're trying to touch. So I think that's kind of, and we're gonna touch on it, one of the other agenda items just about our work plan um, is spending some time as a unit. I mean, we certainly do it all the time, trends, what we do each year, what are our lines, but I don't know that we've really accurately shared that picture with the board. We've certainly talked about it kind of year over year, pre-pandemic to current, but I think it would be good for us to put charts and stuff together just to share with the group of, here's what the last five years have looked like. Can we just pause for a minute sure. and enter that area? I printed this out, at least for the board members. You don't get to see it. <laughs> uh, it's right off the website. It's what the board is supposed to do. Uh, okay. And and uh, I never really thought of it that way. But we, Arian and I and uh, Yvette and somebody sat down, what, three or four weeks ago or something, we said, how do we restructure this group to make it useful for us as a board and make it more useful for you? And regurgitating a bunch of numbers is probably not the best way for us to be because you're 
doing this same cycle every quarter and it's the same old, same old. And this is what Aaron was just talking about. But if you look at what we're supposed to do, we're supposed to evaluate and make, make recommendations on programs that help the financial stability of the fund and how revenues are used, recommend recommendations on expansion addition or improvement. Why don't we just, uh, just so we said it. So, but the point is that's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, let's hit that one on the agenda item, otherwise. Is right. there an agenda item? Yes. Just like you didn't see the survey. I don't know. <laughs> no, I was not given the survey. We know that. <laughs> 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 we'll make a habit of making sure. Don't <laughs> send the calendar reminder. <laughs> Where's my shoe? They're live. <laughs> no. uh, uh, let's see. see. So <laughs> I can touch on our. Sorry, I thought. That, where is that in the agenda? Five C. Oh, thank you. Oh, is it so part of what David's going with this? But uh, when I'm looking at this chart, I'm trying to digest what this stuff means. To me, the bottom of the chart, to me, is irrelevant. It's, it's all proportions now. Yes. So, yes. so, so that's why I make it the bottom. Yeah. So, and a lot of this is just born out of predecessors yeah. and desires to see more granular. And, and, and so I don't care about that. And, and I guess that number is important, but the, the split. Up. But I think what's important is what these revenues are. Mm -hmm. But what I don't have, unless I go back into other documents, is what's the capacity of each garage and, 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 and kind of what's a layer of detail. Yep. And I think that's the type of stuff that I want to at least, you know, a couple of times a year, just share a little more flavor of what's actually happening out there as opposed to we made $7 million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, number of permits that are currently issued, what might be coming down the pipeline, you know, what agreements do we, you know, so I'm, I think there's some information that we can share that can yeah, because the highlight yeah, where David was going with this, it, you know, should parking be free on the streets? Right. And, and, and so, yeah. you know, do we, do we look at those type of things? Is that a revenue stream that we want to have, or is that going to stop the party? Is that going to stop what's going on? Yeah. Um, if that's the downtown is in fact during the day, so we're not going to, and it's not going to come back for a while. My prediction, but I think it's a ton of knowledge. But um, we have to find a way to get more revenue coming. You know, I think, right? And that, that's where yeah, I mean, we're challenged with that uh, conversation all the time. Is you know, yeah. what's good for the bank account and what's good for the activity levels. It might be you yeah. know at competing mm -hmm. odds, and it's trying to balance that along with you know agenda items from you know council and everything else so as to what are the priorities? What's the direction? So, <laughs> but if the garages are charging at night, right, and and they're open and all that, and and, so we're, and and that's where I'll say the bulk of the cost is in this model. Right. But we're giving it away on the street. We're competing against ourselves. But you, yeah, I mean, there's always the argument that the most convenient and closest on-street parking should actually be more expensive. And we've always been as a city, and I think most of these are actually flipped in that. We are less expensive to park on-street right in front of a business as opposed to parking in one of our drives. And during the day, I think this board has been pretty emphatic about we want to encourage the traffic yep. in the downtown for our business. That's right. right. We give away and maybe that's because the downtown association and businesses are very well represented here, but, but I support that. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, it, so those I, are the I, just, I, I just think we're fighting against ourselves on this stuff like that, but giving stuff away that maybe we don't need. At least when you say, like, looking at the daytime usage in different areas, what garages are full at night, what the street parking around those garages looks like would be useful? I think so. Yeah, because if you have a dead garage during the day, mm -hmm. uh, it, it would be interesting to know how that works. I, and again, I, until I see it, I don't know how it relates. But I, I, to me, just showing a revenue line is interesting. Without knowing the capacity or what the underutilization of stuff is, yeah. I can't make any. And that's that's so in five C. I think well, let's yeah. take a moment, just bullet point some 
you know, curiosities the board might have or stuff like that. And then I think we can build that into our next work plan to prioritize some information sharing around occupancy, evening, daytime, trend lines, you know, stuff like that, that we can easily put together. And it's stuff that we regularly review just from an operational standpoint, but we just have not historically. Mm -hmm. I have reports that we've done like a annual special meeting five years, six years ago, where we put together very detailed occupancy notes and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I will tell you that, sorry, Aaron, but Aaron's charging with doing some new dashboards, if you will, and occupancy is something I'm honing in on. So that's good to hear. So we'll, we'll definitely. But I think for the parking that. garages, it might be easy to get the data, but for on-street parking, it might be quite difficult. It's labor intensive, but you know, part of item, what, five, six, you got, you got six a, a is, is a project that might allow us or will allow us to more fully understand the utilization at our curb mm -hmm. funds. So we hope to have much more data in the coming year. So let's get down to 5C as fast as possible. What do you got to do to get me? I think I'm you guys are the prime 5A and I can move on to the next Let's one. go. That's well, what we want to talk about. So tell us what I, I need a motion and a second to get rid of 5A. <laughs> what is that? Oh, the, we just did what the, we just did. Yeah. Uh, get rid yeah, of. Well, we'll just move on. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> David, would you like the motion to approve it? Yeah, there I would go. like a motion to approve it, please. All right, motion. second. All right. <laughs> I think I asked for it. There should be a first and a second. Yeah, Isn't that how Roger should yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gave you the motion. Oh, I said, moving you're on. in charge here, man. I, I'm okay. Okay. You put us on track. Let's start. Charlie's got to leave in a few minutes. I get a half hour. Can I get that? How much my meter good for them? So. All right. <laughs> Dovetailing on our current situation, we have our upcoming 24-25 proposed budget. It's the third column on your handout there. That's this one right here. Yep. Right? Yes. Our current mid-year numbers, so the same numbers transposed from the other reporter right here in this, so our 23-24 mid-year. Our proposed budget. Basically carries for 15.4 million, just slightly below where we're at in our mid-year rounding exercise. Uh, really there, our expenses 12.6, uh, transfers slightly less than this year. Currently in this year, we had 200,000 in additional monies uh, earmarked for the ice rink as a, I think that was a mayor's budget message last year. Uh, we haven't gotten the mayor's budget messages yet. Uh, so there might be other directions um, out of the parking fund, but currently as it stands, there's transfers slightly less than this year. Um, net revenue up based on our uh, projections and a slight negative in our change to our fund balance, we would anticipate our understanding of our expenses will flip that number in reality as we move through the year. So, so the number is going to be zero or about that. Or maybe it's I'm hoping positive. it's slightly positive when yeah. we manage our expenses yeah. as we historically have. Say it's going to... <laughs> Do you need me to draw blood <laughs> in or <laughs> if necessary? Only if necessary. On the back side of that is our five year CIP. It's our capital project line. Uh, it's well under where we've been for the last couple of years. We have no major projects identified in this budget with the exception of some additional monies earmarked for our elevators. Um, there's a major elevator project currently underway. They just completed the third street garage elevators. Um, they're moving over to fourth and San Fernando here in the, this month or next month. Market street is after that. So, by what is it? Uh, by end of calendar year, January of 25, we should be done with all of the facilities. December of 25. Yes. No. December of 24 to leading into January of 25. We hope to be done with all three locations. Right. December of 24. This is March of 24. Correct. Yeah. So over so the, the next, next nine days, months, you're uh, going to get all these done. Yes. More or less. Yep. Yeah. 
Yippee! <laughs> cross our fingers, they don't get lit on fire and smashed. But, but you're basically putting in all new cabs with, with new, you know, floors and better better options. Flooring, for the walls of the, the right. so they're not changing the actual cab, they're reskinning the interior, okay. putting new floors in, all of okay. the electronics and motors, okay. and that's being done. Are they putting cameras in elevators? Why not? Uh, that would be under our other security improvements what line. DPW's project or public, public works this project. Uh, what, what? I'm sorry, which public works project? Hey, the elevators? No, the cameras. The cameras. The citywide is, camera. Project. It's a citywide camera project, hey, which hey. is they got no no bids, no they're compelling bids <laughs> during the last time. So they're going back to the scope. So we're starting seeing all where they get. So. Uh, we have money to pull the trigger when that happens. Uh, How much do we have in our budget? One point two five million. Where is that shown? Oh, security. Yeah. This is the seventy fives across. That's yeah, but, but in our current year we have one point two five, one point two six five million, and then we carry seventy five thousand each year to do any yeah. updates and upgrades to them. So. <laughs> We have one, two, six, five this year. I caution everybody: the cameras aren't the panacea that everybody believes them to be. They will capture the crime, and that's about it. <laughs> step step <laughs> one, then convince the DA to yeah, that process, yeah. and then the judge to to uh, block the mob. So um, the three-step process. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, once we do these bigger projects that are in our current year, whether it's the facade at the Market Street, the elevators, um, we've got some um, facility maintenance items called structural repairs. Uh, there's some cracking and stuff at the Art Employee Garage, at the Market Street Garage, the Third Street Garage um, that's being remediated. So there's some bigger ticket items that we're undertaking now. After that, we're kind of putting a hold on any major projects we have money here to maintain facilities but not major improvement projects. how do you feel about doing like a press release or a big event with politicians and when you finish east garage Unless elevators you, yeah i don't know that it rises up to that level that's that how about when you just make sure the politicians are always looking for a parade to get out in front of i mean you just got to create the parade yeah uh you okay if I stop them? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't stop you from doing your David things. <laughs> is, is the board? I'll always say no when you ask me, can you do? And, uh, recommendations. You recommendations. <laughs> saying recommendations here. <laughs> hey, I just had a point, Bumps. Uh, is the board familiar with our grant for digitization? Do we want to? Just well, we have that. We've got the six A is Elias's is line. Okay, got it. So any questions on the proposed budget or CIP? No, no, no. But that we can uh, well, can we have a motion to approve that? that yeah. Motion. It's a second. motion. One motion. One second. And a second. All in favor? Right. Opposed? Unanimous. Go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're playing. Well, well, I would like to keep the team on on point. All votes should be unanimous. <laughs> So I'm going to take some notes. I think, you know, we've heard occupancy information. Well, the first thing we talked about, Aaron, was like, can you give us 10 or 20 years worth of data, like just the big numbers, revenue, expense, results? And then 20 years may be excessive, well, but we can go back after yeah. or get less. Yep. And which is what Charlie's really saying is how does this fit in with you know, before before the lockdown, after the lockdown, and and so I think that's the biggest thing that I wanted that we talked about before. I didn't bring my notes and then ran out of the house. And whatever anybody else would like to see, you know, is there? What did you say, Charlie? You wanted occupancy? Yeah, well, it's, and this day is night. Yeah, but yeah. Is there a color that we can have behind it? So, so you want to like four hour things. increments, or typically what we'll do is we can do. We can do hourly, so the peak of every hour, and then you know we build out typically curves to show us here, and then 
what we'll do is like a daytime peak and an evening peak. And what we've historically seen is that we get these two bell curves right. where your morning it builds up midday yeah. and comes down in the evening, but then that then ramps back up as the folks come to dinner and events. So we can build those type of things. We actually already have them in many respects. Um, and then we can color in, I'm thinking, things like number of key cards active. I know right now we probably have 25 to 30 fewer percentage key cards active than we had in 2019. Um, just again, it's another flavor of if we have the same number of key cards active, but our occupancy was going down, that's just people aren't coming to work. Whereas we're seeing a little bit of pull. Like, uh, can you segregate out all of the dedicated spaces in the convention garage that go to the two hotels? Yeah, we do. When we talk about the convention center, and that one is a bit of a unique animal, and we typically don't really report out on it in the same way as we would our other facilities. Because it's either 0% or 100. It's not much in between because it's so predicated on the events happening in the building. Sure, but people are the there. The hotel part is different. And we, we don't consider that. There's 1,200 spaces plus or minus in that garage. Only 600 are available to the public. Right. So we kind of count it as only 600. But you have 1140 here. That's the total number of spaces in the garage. But the revenue of 1923 only involves the 600. No, because we get the lease payments for those hotel spaces. So the hotels pay to lease them. If they sit vacant, it doesn't, we don't care. We still get our check. They control their area. I know it has a fence around it. Can we also, when we create this kind of choice, include, you know, is there a difference or what is the difference between events versus non-events? <laughs> if there's, for example, a Sharks game, I would expect the garages by nature are much fuller. So that could be, you know, one Thing would be you would you would think that <laughs> when, was the last time, when was the last time you were at a sharks game? I was there last week. There were four people in my section. We're not, we're not getting the bleed into the downtown like we did. We certainly have some, um, but it isn't the traffic that we saw, you know. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I know. I'm not going to get along that line. What, one of the things that has been a problem. Uh, is you know having enough parking spots for the sharks and around the sharks and yep. close to the sharks. Now with the massive Google non usage of all that land and all the flat space. And again, I haven't been to a sharks game this year, but um, is Google using that for parking? You know, are they no. selling it? Are they doing anything? Or is no. it all Spence. fenced up? It's fenced for now. I mean, so we've got agenda items to talk about, dear Don, but. Um, I understand the sharks are in conversations with Google to see about reopening, specifically a site like Stevens Meet, right. which was a paved parking lot, had the infrastructure, lighting, and all that to just easily reopen. Um, I don't know where those conversations are going, uh, but with the upcoming BART work that's supposed to start later this year, um, it will close some of the surface lots in that area. So we will likely see more bleed into the downtown as those lots go offline. Um, which I think can be good in some respects to the downtown with the restaurants, parking and walking. And sharks don't necessarily see it that way. They'd rather have the folks parking the front door, walk in, spend their time. In the well, I know they use a lot directly across the street for staff. Uh, they actually use a garage. No, there's sort of a lot there. Because my son took me to the game the other day. He parked right there and says, This is where we park his staff. I mean, is he in the shark? Yeah, if he's in maybe one of the executive staff or sales or something like that, they might. But all the call blue coats, the oh, ushers yeah. and they're all concessionaires, and employees, full time. They probably give them perks that the others don't give. But um, I don't know, know whose lot that is. I assume that's Google's now, and they must have always been on that. Well, which one you're talking Right next to the old water. Street property on Delmas, yeah, yeah. That's yes. those they park some staff on the Delmas lots. Who owns those? It's, uh, it's not the that's Google, but they, but they control it. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Google, they made a deal with Google at least on that. Yeah. So um, when I look at our work plan, I think when we see our next meeting is in June, so we will have a draft work plan. We'll have a draft work plan in June. So 
if we're moving in the direction of just you know a little more holistic information, I'm going to play with our work plan. Um, I've taken some notes on some of the stuff we're talking about today. I know that that is, we have the idea so we can go back. Um, I might take out some of these like CIP updates. Like we'll hit you with the pre-year, mid-year, and end of year. So maybe I get rid of one. I know Henry Cord was the big advocate of, you know, why aren't you completing projects? Why is every dollar being spent on your CIP? So we added a cadence to that that was very granular. I think I can eliminate some of that and infuse some other information. Um, so we'll, we'll play with some of the stuff here and put in some additional bullets in our work plan, if that works. Good. Okay. Five C. Well, can, could you just describe again all the things that you're going to do? We talked about like 10 years or something. 10 years of revenue and expense is standalone. Right. What were the other things you said? Occupancy. Yeah, was I think it's one. a little more granularity around. So, I mean, yes, we can provide ten years of history. I don't know how relevant that is outside of just looking from where we came to where we are. All that um, the relevant. Uh, I'm more occupancy. interested in sharing what we're doing today, and I. So we'll give you ten years. That's fine. But what does today look like? What's the horizon? What are we doing operationally? What are we doing on our security? I've got a manager that oversees our security contract. He spends much of his actual work day. He's not a Monday through Friday, nine to five. He's a, you know, Tuesday through Saturday working from, you know, 2 p.m. till 2 a.m. type of guy. He's actually in the field overseeing our security vendor. So I'd like to bring him in to share information about what he's seeing out there. You know, what are the challenges so we can bring in data around that. So I think some of our security data would be interesting to share. Um, so I wrote 10 year revenue and expense, occupancy operations today, security data, and what Prince said talked about events, details. Was there anything else? Did I miss anything? I think we, we kind of understand the one, just transition kind of the lens that we're looking at stuff through. And so we'll play around with some bullet items. I think in some ways, maybe we'll put some specifics. In some ways, we'll just leave it vague in the work plan that we all understand what will be in a operational reporting or something like that versus very prescriptive. Because the work plan, technically, for the city rules, we should stick to. So we need two more board members. Yes. So what, what are the layers on this I think you, you have? is We talked about events. Because that, that's one... Uh, you know, lumpiness of this thing. Well, I think August to December, um, at the university's in, and you know, January through May, the university's in. I think the university plays a role in the clogginess of what's going on during the day in the downtown. Um, I think you know, putting Christmas in the park, you know, causes. Uh, more clogginess in you know more uh, shortened amount of time. I don't know if other events, you know, whether it's an request or uh, you know the jazz fest or any of those things, or any different than rock and roll half marathon or any other things that cause. Yeah, we don't have many sustained long events that you know we would see a big spike from. I think you know, we have. The granular data around every shark scan. How many, you know, event tickets are we selling for those types of things? Um, so we can try to bleed in some stuff. Obviously, yeah. I'm not sure part. there's a question there. It's just I, I think we need those are some of the things that cause loneliness. And I think that's what we as a board should be looking at is how do we, whether it's variable pricing or you know, what, what is it? What, what does that mean to us? And do we want to do variable pricing? Do we not? It, it, it's a whole separate discussion, but. I think understanding the lumpiness of things, at least we can scratch our heads and think about what we do about it. Yeah, the opportunities. That's where you're going, right? Yeah. Would, you, would you be interested in maybe seeing like the top events in terms of like, you know, as a soul or yeah, or like per year kind of to see what your good draws are? So I think so. Okay. But, so I think so. But I think one of the things that you know, I'm the chair of the sports authority, right? Mm -hmm. So we bring in sporting events into the city, and the the two weeks or three weeks of the year that we circle all the time, we're out scouting for events. 
is you know the first week of January mm -hmm. where there's you know no one travels for business the first week of January. Yeah. And so you try to fill up the hotel room and you're trying to do that. And then it's the mid June to you know Fourth of July week where again no one's traveling or very little travel is happening at the time. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to bring in you know, an event then it's way better than trying to bring it in in October or April when there's other competing things that are coming. The sports authority, I'm not, I mean, I'm not aware of it. I'm not as familiar with their charge, if you will. Is it specific to bringing activity to the arena that's sporting and not, you know, sharks and, you know, professional stuff? It's so, so the gymnastics and stuff like that. So, so the arena is the main venue, venue right? But frankly, it's you know whether we're, we're helping with the FIFA bid for uh, World Cup, yeah. Super Bowl bid. So helping with the Levi's type of stuff, helping with uh, you know, but it has no this World Cup over at the earthquakes, right? And, and, but it has no influence or involvement in. The volleyball weekends that happen at the convention oh, center, or yeah. tournaments that happen at the ice rinks, yeah. all of those things. Some of those. Okay. So the ice rink does some of their own tournaments, most of their own tournaments. Yeah, but they link in to this, right? Um, and again, I think that's a microcosm down on South uh, mm -hmm. Campus area. So certainly, I'm not sure that's a part of this, but um, the Rock and Roll Half Marathon. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, that's two days. You know, in the downtown. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, I think that's a layer. On top of that, that um, and if we look at the trends, and you say it's not just those two pockets of time that are slow in the downtown, then John Poach and his team can go out and target other events in other parts of the year that are slow for us. And like I tell businesses or you know property owners downtown when they're kind of inquiring about, hey, you know, I'm trying to get tenants, you know. What's the availability and stuff like that? Like my sarcastic response is, if you came to me today and said you wanted a thousand permits, I would gladly sell you a thousand permits. So to the question of what's events and scale could we support in the downtown? What's a slow period? It's Monday through Sunday, <laughs> seven days a week right now. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll cartoon it. But we have this big NVIDIA conference that's coming in March. Yeah. All right. That's one of these massive peaks. Lots of meetings are made. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and so how are we making sure that we're using all of our space the best, and, and charging because we're going to have lots of people making sure we're taking full advantage or and, and whatever that means. It might be free or like charging. I don't know what that is yet, but optimizing what we want to have. And that's not just raising revenue it's optimizing spirit and use and you know wanting these people to come back year after year there so those events i mean obviously in video the people will come you know right. we're just going to try to make it as smooth operationally for them so that the experience is painful from a parking perspective so the parking operator and our staff will ensure the convention center and the surrounding service slots and to some extent some of the other garages like second and san carlos that gets the fleet over um be you know, a great people place for people to park and then get on to their day. You know, nobody comes to an event to park. <laughs> That's just part of the process. So try to make it as slippery as possible in and out and go on to your event. But then, last so that that's kind of the peak, right? That that's you know the most volume that we're gonna see in the downtown is that that we put ourselves in March. So Thinking of it, wow, this is as busy as it gets. Are we at capacity? When are we at capacity? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and, and 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 then literally look at the next meeting and see, okay, they're gone. What what's the drop off that we saw? Uh, uh, that that's the type of interesting data I want. Yeah, well, I think certainly <laughs> that event coming on the tail of St. Patrick's Day. That's probably. Just adds to that, right? Because if you look at that Saturday through the following Monday. Um, but kind of to what you're saying, right? You know, looking at the lowest and the highest, like thrown out, like would be looking at like our peak and lowest, like seven day, you know, weeks throughout the year, kind of trying to figure out right, lack of events, like you said, first week of the year, 
and then you know nvidia what like, what's the other conferences or just hey it's great weather school's about to or just got out you know like kind of looking at what those are and, and how to either leverage you know we're at capacity or near capacity and also all right we're empty how do we how do we get people in so okay. Right, sorry. If we are at capacity that week for NVIDIA mm -hmm. and it isn't stopped, then do we look to go back to NVIDIA and say, well, you know what? If you next year mm -hmm. right, scheduled it the following week, the university is off that week, right? It, 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 you know, they're not right. here. All of a sudden, we got four more parking garages that can fill up additional people that mm -hmm. could park. We will not fill up our downtown core. Okay, and, 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 but I have no clue. Right. And that, that's why I'm asking the questions. And it, it's not to drive revenue for me. That's no, no, not where I was going with this. It's how do we make it so that downtown is a good experience for these people coming in? Because these are high net worth individuals spending a lot of money. And if there's a positive impression there, that, that's only going to help our downtown in the future. Yeah. yeah. Well, to, to that point, too, is there any historical data of, of surveying actual parkers and, and, you know, their experience and whether, you know, where the pain points are? I think we've... Well, that's the customer survey. Well, the, that's the customer survey of what it's like in the garage, but what... Are you what, ta oh, you're talking about downtown? Yeah, uh, so, so where are the pain I think points? the Downtown Association has done some surveying right. over the years right. uh, specific to, you know, what brought them to downtown, why wouldn't they come downtown? No, no. But the Office of Economic Development, I think, would likely have that information. I know. Yeah. Try to keep a pulse on it. But I think to your point, you know, likely intercept surveys. If you're in here for an event, you're probably not looking at the QR code. You know, if you're trying to pay, park, get to your, sure. you know, concert. So there's probably somewhere there over time. I think it could be helpful though to direct you know what we're trying to do or where the pain you know we've changed yeah. over who's coming downtown you know and if we're you know except for drivers i think we need to understand what their you know is that hour and a half good enough is you know is the parking you know do they find it expensive is that what's keeping it is that why they're going to santana row um yeah you know, so well that's going to flip yeah. santana row will start charging sure. probably before the holidays is what i'm hearing so the mall did it two years ago. Right. Santana Rose behind the times. Um, so you know, there won't be that comparative now. You know, Santana Rose, the walkable Disneyland of these folks right. downtowns. You know, it's not going to ever be the same. <laughs> um, so we but still to, have that to your point, maybe you know when you do when you look at the survey, the survey could maybe kind of adding. This kind of question: What are your main points for parking? That will be one additional question. Yeah, I mean, I think we try to capture, you know, in our surveys, you know, how did you the safety perspective? How was the signage? How was the equipment? How was your in and out? You know, those things. So I think we do a decent job of capturing it. I mean, I went to Santana Road just two or three weeks ago, just early in an afternoon on a Saturday, and it took me forty minutes to get out of their garage. So it was free, <laughs> but there's no way now with the person carrying, you know, their Fendi bags and, you know, all their expensive merch still have a, you know, not pleasant experience. My guess is they were, you know, they're fine. They knew what they were getting into and they were fine with it. They come downtown for whatever reason, they expect to park right at the front door of a business. They're unwilling to walk, you know, but yeah. Uh, well, it, there's something there. Yeah, we talk a lot in other meetings about downtown. It's, you know, kind of suburban perspective of parking, right? I go to the grocery store, I park right in front of the grocery store. So our downtown visitors, compared to, say, like San Francisco, where you expect you're going to be walking a bit or you're going to be taking public transportation, that expectation doesn't exist for downtown San Jose at this point, and not in the same way, at least. Yep. So what if what if we were if if the economic development folks and all of them are doing a survey sometime maybe we could add a few questions relevant to us. Trust me, I've seen the results. They always have a thing on parking, and it's always negative. The last one that I recall is what why didn't you come downtown? So why didn't why would you not come downtown? Yeah. Zero parking event. I know that's weird because well 
Don't get me started on that, but it's a it's a perception thing. Yeah, it is. Everybody I talked to, I said, "You really can park for ninety minutes for free?" That I had no idea. Though. But that's my little beat the drum. <laughs> but but I don't know. I mean, did they do? Can we see their last survey? Can we find that and have a look I at it and see? I mean, are there more questions? Bring us to the next one. Maybe bring there. it to the next meeting, and maybe yeah. we can say, "Well, maybe we can brainstorm some questions we'd like to add to their next survey." It is more more than why don't you come downtown because parking sucks. So mm -hmm. seven a on the agenda is always a standing item. Maybe during that you could. Why don't you invite one of those economic development people to come visit with us? He's right. He's right. <laughs> yeah. He's the downtown oh. manager. Yeah. Oh, but he you're, missed you're, the you're in Nancy Wine Shop. Chance. I am. Well, I got here late. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what department you were in. It's, hey, I'm sorry. Six, six months ago, you went. I know who you are. Yeah. You and I have had many conversations. <laughs> yeah. So find the survey. Send it out to us. Let's see if we can figure it out. That's okay. that's relevant to this stuff, like recommendations on programs and needs and all that kind of stuff. Well, Please note that Charlie's left the building. Yep. <laughs> it has been noted. I think one thing we talk about is the residents. Also the residents. Because we talk a lot about business, but what about the residents? Well, that's a good question, too. Because, you know, I live in downtown. I hear it from when, when you invite people, hey, where can I park? Right? That's one of the first questions. Right. And in front of our building, there is no public parking except that you have to pay your course. Well, I think what's so relevant too is there's been such a turnover since the pandemic. I mean, it's a complete, from my business perspective, I have a completely new member base because of what happened. So I, I just, you know, I, I think it's old surveys or you might as well toss them because they're not the same people. So you know, hopefully we get some relevance there. The, the one that the downtown, or not the downtown, the Office of Economic Development did and the city did as a whole, I don't even remember when it was. It was pre-COVID. So I think it's fairly old at this point, but it was a consultant-driven citywide mass type effort. It wasn't hand-issued survey. It was a you know, thousands of aggregated responses from people that live and work in San Jose. I think it I think it probably drove the 90 minutes free and, and all the you know all the changes that happened to a certain degree. I, I mean sure. COVID really you know, was an impetus of that. Yeah. We were actually driving a bus towards eliminating validations or significantly reducing them. And then COVID hit and we saw the need to maintain, you know, some level of free parking. And then we have a new system with our technology that facilitated, you know, more flexibility and getting rid of all those paper tickets that we used to hand out. So that's where we went with the 90 minutes. And our convoluted program before was just ridiculous. We get it validated during the day. It was a one amount. If it was in the evening, it was this. If it was weekends, it was that. If you did it at 555 versus six, it was something else. Like even we struggled to articulate it to the public. And so with this, it was more simple to communicate. It was clean. It re required zero administration to do. Um, all right. I think what also would be helpful is some sort of benchmark analysis. You know, how do we compare to other cities? And yeah. say, you know, yeah. what is what is uh, San Francisco doing differently? In, uh, the, and I don't put. And I'm not. I'm not talking about so you know, all the nitty gritty details. More kind of an. An. And what we hear from our operator, who operates facilities across the country, that they're actually really surprised at our numbers. For what we consider to be like the downtown core and business center of a city, they're actually surprised in a lot of respects in the activity that we're at. Some are still below us, but they were like San Francisco's financial district. Forget it, it's a ghost town, but it's not the business mecca. You know, like there's not many gyms in that core or restaurants and stuff like that. that's not where that type of activity ever took place, but it's where people drove and parked and went to work Monday through Friday, those places are, forget it, like way below where we're at from an occupancy standpoint. And they never had night activity. So it's kind of weird when you compare. It's hard to compare the two. I would think better examples would be San Diego, Sacramento, and Denver. 
those would be better benchmarks. For else. No, we well, that would be me too. I just used that for this guy. I know you did, but San Francisco. And you, you know, we can so is Oakland over there. Better. Oakland's where you park your car in Oakland. It's going to be broken in. I mean, nine times out of ten right now. So, so I would limit I'd, San Diego, Sacramento. I don't know if they have meters on the streets in Sacramento. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Denver. Those would be much, much better Denver. better benchmarks for us. Um, all right, let's jump in to spitballing. 6A. 6A? Yes. We don't so, have to have a, an a, uh, approval of C that. Nope. No, Mr. Mr. Uh, Boss. Chairperson. <laughs> 6A. 6A. Hit it, Elias. <laughs> All right. So, so this is an update for the smart grant TSDOP smart grant. But since I see uh, new faces, I'll just briefly tell what it is. So last year or the year before, USDOT issued a uh, smart grant and was accepting applications. We applied for it and we got a grant for $2 million for technology related to uh, uh, curb space and transportation, basically. Uh, it is a pilot program, so they're not gonna, uh, they're gonna, we're gonna have to prove to them that this concept is good. And if we, if they accept it after the end of the program, uh, we can apply it to stage two and they give us uh, up to $16 million and uh, fund it. We can apply for a stage two. It's yes, not we can team. apply. No. Yeah. <laughs> if they agree, because we are competing with other cities. Um, anyway, uh, so the SMART, USDOT SMART program started, uh, we entered into agreement with USDOT in the September 15 of 2023. It's an 18-month uh, program. Uh, uh, so we are now in March, so there's still about, it's a whole the last a year. year. Yeah. A year. Yeah. And we haven't put a sensor on the pole yet, right? Yes. No, no. And uh, so the 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 grant uh, went through to actually need to procure uh, equipment. And since our process is very long with it with the city, we utilized uh, an agency in the Minnesota called Sourcewell, Sourcewell, which does the cooperative uh, procurement uh, for cities and for states. Uh, so we use them after we get approval, of course, of our purchasing and finance department. So right now, the our, the procurement process is complete in the sense that we now are listed on a bench, and we are about to select the vendor and start negotiating an agreement with them so that they can start the work. Uh, the, uh, the vendor that is going to be selected, obviously, is the one that scored the most, the best in terms of technology views, the cost, and the ability to deliver the project because we have only now have 12 months to complete. So we're about to give the go ahead so that we can uh, give a stop the negotiations with the city. The, the project is basically, I haven't talked about but the project is to digitize the parking supply uh, in San Jose and to focus first on downtown. Digitize it, meaning uh, uh, visualize all the parking spaces in a, on a platform with all the rules and the regulations related to them and what type of parking. So that's the first uh, step. We use camera sensor technology mounted to city infrastructure. Or yeah, that's the second portion of it. So there's a software portion, which is the um, the, uh, Even you know, the, the like the supply, let's call it the supply, knowing where our supply, where it is, and what type of supply it is. The other portion of the project is to utilize technology such as sensors or cameras so that you can get the demand data. But what is happening at the curve? Our, the best we can know right now either is to go do a survey, uh, this or use smart or the, the meters uh, data, but it's not complete. The meter data tells you that the transaction happened. We don't know how long they stay. Some people may park, obviously, and they don't pay, so that's why they get cited. So we don't have a complete picture of the length of stay at, at each space. So we are going to use pilot this technology 
And we would we are not try to pilot more than one technology to see which one is more reliable. And we're gonna start getting information on the uh, utilization of the, of the And it goes beyond just meter spaces. So we okay. looking so passenger picked up all the all those things in whatever geographic area. We're still unclear. Correct me if I'm wrong as to what that envelope the two million dollars can give us. Because right. we just yeah. start to understand what the vendor can supply in terms of pricing for each widget that we might need and how many will be uh, so what does that look like? So this sits on a pole and it looks down the street and looks at the parking spaces and it can that's differentiate one the them. It, it's one, one of the it's but one there's other there are different technologies. Oh. You can put sensors in the ground, right? And put the, on the pole on next to the meter. Yeah. Uh, so the the idea also is not uh, we we we're, we're gonna try to make it. Uh, there are two things that are associated with this is to be uh, is. Uh, well, hopefully it will help us understand pedestrian safety as well. So it's not only about parking. For example, we're gonna probably target some red zones and maybe some areas where we know there is double parking to see how often that is happening. Uh, so it will give us that ability. The, the one thing I wanna say about this grant, it's not the, the pill you take to solve everything because it's an expensive technology. The pilot, we're gonna try to do everything we can do with the pilot, with the hardware and software. When when the program expires, we're gonna still have this platform and the software, but we need to budget if we wanna have this model expanded across all of that town and other, other areas like the Japan town or areas where we know there is activity and that would be conducive for uh, implementing it because this technology has ongoing costs. So if you can, yeah, they can give us $60 million if we if they approve us for the stage two, but what are going, what are ongoing costs going to be and do we, can we budget for them? Does it also allow to reserve a parking spot? Yes, it would give you- the So if I know, for example, I will be at a specific location at three o'clock, I can, Reserve a it, it, I'm, from I'm telling you, it allows you now in the city is is uh, creating right now. All the curbs that we have are, you know, like uh, either, either uh, Munich code or uh, California vehicle code. Like we only have yellow zone, uh, passenger loading zone, and metered spaces are free. Right? We don't have places for the Ubers, the uh, door dashes, we, we need to create. A lot of the impetus of the grant from the federal government's perspective is to evaluate that emerging side of things. The Ubers, the Lyfts, the like shared vehicle models, those types of things to say, is there mechanisms to ensure there's a place for those vehicles to go and either pick up their goods to then move on or come and deliver, can FedEx, work collaboratively with cities so that they know that they can go to that block face and do their pickup and drop offs um, and pay for it. Whereas as opposed to double parking, which creates congestion, you know, so we're a test bed for it. Are we suffering from the impacts of it today? I don't think so. Are other urban very corners, marginal? Yeah, it may be in some few streets, very marginal. But like our other but major like cities, when we were, when we were they, busy pre COVID, we probably, yeah, I mean, there was where do we park? I mean, the, 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 the answer to where do we park, there is parking. You just have to pay for it sometimes if it's unless you get validated at the old days. But there is parking. In, in San Jose, we never didn't have parking. Mm -hmm. Like, it, but you have to walk. Like it's not gonna be in front of, of the business because because some businesses even they park themselves in front of the business yeah. instead of leaving it for their guest clients and customers. So anyway, so this is the update on the smart grant. Um, I have one year to bring the, to install and get data and get information about it and apply for the next phase. So one year from last September or one no, year, one year from today? From the today. Okay. So we'll keep you guys updated as we move through that process. But there are 1,871 parking spaces that put out meters in downtown. You're not going to be able to do all of those. You're going to have to pick. 
How many can you do? 500 maybe? We will be hoping 400, 400, but I doubt. Somewhere between 200 and 400 is the answer. Yep. 50 and 100. We'll keep you posted. <laughs> Soon we'll, I'll know. Soon I'll know. Soon I'll know. 7A Downtown Promotions and Marketing. We've got John oh, with the Downtown in, Association. Yeah, the quick Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> so, brief update. Thank you uh, so much for uh, letting me share some information with you. Um, as you know, we manage the parksj.org uh, website. Um, we are in the process of making that an ADA compliant website right now. Um, just so we don't get things anywhere in the future. So um, that is a task, but it's not an overwhelming task, but it is important to do. Um, I will tell you that I was looking through stats because I wasn't really sure what this group wants to hear. Uh, so real quickly, our website traffic on Park SJ, uh, we had a significant increase of 41%. Uh, website views went uh, up to 185,000. So people are looking at the website, they're they're seeing it because we're promoting it, not only in our newsletters, but all our events that are we're activating or participating in, in downtown San Jose. Speaking of events, we for just- For what period, 185,000? This is from July 1st to December 31st of 2023. Six months. Mm -hmm. well, five months. December 31st. July 6th. About six months. So, um, and speaking of events um, and, and projects that we're also working on, we just launched our arts grant uh, program yesterday. And what this is, is, and thank you to DOT, you provided some funding along with the Knight Foundation, and we're offering $25,000 grants to small art groups here in the downtown core. So we're going through the process right now, accepting applications, and applications are due March 29th. Um, I won't go through any of the other stuff. I, I, well, one last thing. I did see a reel that we did on parking um, on Instagram, and we got over three hundred thousand views on that reel, which was really cool. I don't, I don't know the time period. I just saw it real quick, um, but that was interesting to see and showing people, you know, hey, take your ticket. It's ninety minutes free, and just kind of walking through it. It was a cool reel. That's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Excellent. 7B is a placeholder. Um, we quickly touched on it uh, relative to the Eardon Arena area. I have a couple of notes that my team is working on. So, with the BART, so what was for many years envisioned as the Google project being the most uh, on the horizon event that would impact the Eardon area. Well, that went quiet over the last year or so. It is now the BART Silicon Valley project, which will result in the closure of three surface parking lots directly across from the arena on Santa Clara. Uh, and so that will reduce the parking availability directly adjacent to that. So we anticipate that that's going to result in some bleed over into the downtown. Uh, certainly some of the other lots, either on-site proper, or what we call the Delmas lots, um, we'll probably see an uptick, obviously, um, as well as the Almaden Plaza garage, which is the garage right after you exit uh, 87 onto Santa Clara on the right-hand side next to the AC Marriott. Um, the arena actually, the Sharks sell parking at that garage as part. So if you were to go online and buy a ticket to a game, you could actually buy parking for that site. Who owns that site? I don't know. I don't know what Private that. individual? The garage? And yeah, whoever owns those three office buildings right now. Okay. So, Sorry, yep. So they have an agreement to sell parking. So we will probably see some lead over. Um, with the completion of the new Adobe Tower, one of the conditions of that property was to allow evening and weekend event traffic related to the arena park there. Although it's contemplated, I don't know that there's any utilization currently. It's not all that um, convenient, if you will, because it was never designed as a, you know, it's it's for the building, but on paper, it's available to us. If we work with them, you know, we might energize that, particularly as maybe Google does come back online and there is more mass reduction in parking in the area. Um, How many but, spaces are in there, roughly? In the Adobe site? Mm -hmm. Not off the top, it's 1,400. I think we're a little over a thousand. It's well over a thousand. Oh, yeah. 
just in the new building. It's a million square feet, probably a building. So, um, my team is working on updating what we call the TPMP, the traffic and parking management plan that the arena has. So, the city city owned property, the city works in, hand in hand with the arena on this plan that dictates everything from the signage that's out on the freeways in the downtown, how many officers are going to work during events, what are the routes in and out, working with BTA on train scheduling. So it's basically the plan on how to get people in and out of there. So we're going to have to update that just because of the change in parking um, availability. There's going to be street closures. We need to know about it. What is the cadence of those? So we're updating that, that document now. Um, is there a date when they're going to start all that stuff? Then? Uh, currently scheduled for August of this year. Oh, good. Um, yeah, that's going to be years of that. Um, yeah. 16 to be exact. We continue to build out <laughs> and work on the uh, plan to build out what we call the Milligan site. We anticipate that currently. My note as recently as a week or two ago was December, end of December. Realistically, I'm thinking that gets pushed by a month or two based on the last set of emails I received. Um, the redrawing some plans, uh, changing a couple of things around the electrical to accommodate more electric vehicle charging stations and stuff like that. So that's about all I've got on Deer Dog. Well done. 7C. Do we need a motion to no, accept that? No, it's okay. just updates. I, I know my job now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 7C, Councilor Committee agenda items specific to parking. I am not aware of any. We've had a couple that we were involved in last month, in January, relative to or the on-street enforcement side outside of the downtown, so not necessarily in the purview of the board, but mostly on the oversized slash lived-in vehicle front. It's a big... Uh, big pain point for the city and it's one of our charges is to you know, start working as a city to get our arms around that. So if you're getting involved in the RV parking issue, so parking enforcement side of the house is heavily involved in that. Huh. So we would have to go with the uh, we wish we council. Were. <laughs> okay. We would have to go to council for this one to get in. So oh. you have a date for that and I agree and send this. No that's not purchasing so are we almost done? We are done. I have one question. Sure. This may not be your area of expertise. Uh, don't show me that. <laughs> what is the city's rules on these things? Talk to environmental services. The, the, yes. I had a nice who do I talk to? Drag yeah. out talk to him. verbal tussle with our friends over in environmental services over that. This is the ugliest stuff. It's all over the city. I don't remember it always being like this. Which ones are those specifically? Are those very okay. good? This right is worse than San Fernando. Fernando. Uh -huh. First in San Fernando. Oh, yeah. yeah. But this is just one example. Yeah, of they all have the gazillion. So all of a sudden, Third Street. they appear. Third Street, too? Third Street, Fourth Street. I mean, this does not look good. And you agree with me on something. That's wow. Well, <laughs> look at those ones you've taken of actually the nicest picture yeah, of that the, because they're in, they're in a contained yeah. area. Yeah. Go down 3rd and 4th Street, they'll be in every single parking space. There's trash spilled out everywhere. Yeah. I mean, we've got, I mean, we've got our, you know, where we are. And I wish I could issue on the parking ticket, but they don't have license to, plate. <laughs> we've, got, we've got lights in alley there, and there's like 12 of them there. And I, I think it's all the post street people, but we have rats because of these things Jeez. in the back of our building. And every yeah. council member's office, talk to the departments that are in charge of allowing those to go out. Yeah, I'm taking notes. Those, sorry? I took notes. Those are oh, okay. Yeah. Problem. yeah it's, and I've heard it's, about the rats. Right, she she works room. with the councilman. The, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Okay, I know yeah, that historic that. core, though, right. the historic district, they'll mm -hmm. call it. You know, inherently didn't have the infrastructure to. Yeah, I know. I know why. You got to. You got to deal with trash. And then, yeah. but suddenly it's appeared. It seems like in a way that what were they doing for? I think the utilizations of the spaces have changed over the years. But there's another issue. It, it's out there for days. For example, when the, the yes. garbage collection days on Monday, they put it out already on Friday. 
Yeah, yeah, there is that, and there is some they don't yes. even have a space for them. Mm -hmm. Right. So they should. So it, it, it's somebody the, have to be created. The new come up all downtown just placed like two or three more on Third Street. Yeah. Right yeah, there in Santa Clara. Yeah. Uh, claiming there was no place for garbage, and well, they're sitting in probably two or three meter parking spaces currently. Yeah. And so. and uh, we'll charge them forty dollars every hour for yeah. taking out the space. Get the retention. And it, it's almost like, I'm sorry to say it this, but it's almost like a planning approval issue. Hi, you yeah. approved this project. Where's the trash? Speaking of the water. And wrong and committee, but I know. Yes. Yeah, 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 well, yes, yeah. but not completely. If there's if they're off or operating in your, in our park, in my parking places, I mean, that's part of the problem. I mean, it just seems like that's an obvious big issue that our economic, de oh no, he's not here anymore, our economic development team should be particularly interested in. But the other thing is also, it's not just about, you know, parking, or taking away parking spots, it's also the, the side of it. Yeah. Oh, it looks we, more, we it's more get, about how warm it looks. looks. <laughs> and even when they're well contained, and the smell, the... How are people coming to downtown to frequent the businesses if they see this? I'm in violent agreement with you. I promise you not. <laughs> Let's call well, what are we going to do about it? Off the video at 11:25. Like, what are we going right. to do about it? Is the question really?